In this video, we are looking at the NVIDIA Quattro FX4600. We're going to take a quick look over the card, over the unit, and then we're going to install it in our computer. So the first thing we'll do is take the card out of the packaging. All right, so the first thing you probably notice about this Quattro FX4600 is its sheer size. This is a monster video card. If we take a look here, you'll see it's over a foot long. We have 13 inches if we include this frame here. I may actually have to remove this frame to fit in my computer, which can be done. So looking at the front of the card, we can see it has two DVI and a stereo connector. You'll see it's double width, so it will take up two slots in your machine. We see here on the back, we have our six pin connector there. There's also an auxiliary power input right here, which you'll need a special connector for. And I believe this would be for SLI. So by weight, I mean, this is a pretty heavy card. See, so it has a nice cover, a nice fan for cooling and a heat sink. Very nice looking card actually. So the NVIDIA Quattro FX4600 is actually a pretty old card. This being 2013 and the FX4600 being launched in 2007. But the card it will be replacing is actually older. So a little more about the specs of this card. It's 768 megabyte memory size, 384 bit memory interface. The bandwidth is 67.2 gigabits per second. Max power consumption of 134 watts. And according to the spec sheets, there is 128 CUDA cores. On some other places around the internet, they report 96 CUDA cores. But on the spec sheet I'm looking at, it, it says 128 CUDA cores, which is why I bought this card because I needed more CUDA cores. So even though this is a very old card for the year 2013, you're going to be amazed when you see what it's actually replacing. Here we are inside of the computer case, and this is the video card we'll be replacing. But before we do that, if we look here at this card, we can see we can see that I'm going to have to take off this support bracket. We'll take that off real quick, which is not too difficult. There's screw here and here. We'll take these out. So we removed these two screws. Now we'll flip it over. And there's another screw we have to remove, which is right here. So let's take that one out. All right, so we removed the screw from here, and now there is two screws right here on the top that we also need to remove. So let's remove those. All right, so we've removed the two screws from the top now, the two screws from the back, and the screw from the front over here. So now we can see how there are tabs right here that sink right into the card. Those just pop right off. Real easy. Just be careful that you don't break anything. And there we go. So there's the support bracket that we have removed. We'll hang on to this. And now here's the card out the bracket. It's much shorter. Now it should fit right into place. Now let's remove the old video card. And of course the computer is unplugged, powered off, and everything is unhooked from it. That should be obvious. So first we'll unplug the six pin power connector. All right, we'll need that for the new card. Now we'll take out the card. There's a little switch down here that we have to pull back. Be careful, but sometimes you gotta be a bit firm. If you're not comfortable doing this, always take it to a uh, qualified PC repair technician there we go so here's the old card this is the card i've been using to edit every video i've done so far and to record a lot of the videos since a lot of them are screen captured this card only has 256 megabytes of onboard ram <laughs> and i don't believe any cuda cores when i first purchased this card it was it was a relatively high-end card of course it wasn't the highest end but at the time in 2006 you know, it was a good card, and here it is, 2013. It's lasted me this long. I've worked in Media Composer with it. So even though I had a low-end card, I was still able to, you know, work with videos and do, do all right. And as I've already mentioned, this is an older card released in around 2007. I believe it's one of the first cards to use NVIDIA CUDA technology. And just to give you an idea of how long ago 2007 was, on the NVIDIA page that advertises the Quattro FX 4600, it talks about how proud they are that this card supports windows vista <laughs> of course we're not using windows vista we're using windows 8.1 pro and when this card was released believe it or not it sold for two thousand dollars and i got this card here in 2013 for under fifty dollars of course it's not the highest end card here in 2013 but when you're broke you got to buy what you can buy one thing to note is that the 4600 is not 
officially qualified for Media Composer here in 2013. It used to be, but there's a bug with certain HP workstations. So if you have an HP workstation, you should probably upgrade from a 4600 to a 48 or higher. But since I have a self-built PC, I don't have to worry about that bug. So now we'll install this. We'll choose a slot here first. Okay, so we're going to install the Quattro FX 4600 into this first blue PCI Express X16 2.0 slot. I've already consulted the manual to make sure we're using the right slot, and that's a good thing to do. Anytime you are replacing components in the computer, always consult the motherboard manual. So we'll just drop this in the slot, make sure we're not hitting these other cables here, causing a bind or anything. And, all right, this out of the way. Make sure our clip is up there. And again, this card is going to take up two spaces uh, from the back of your computer. There are two slots. I have to move some things around. And I want to make sure the back is clicked in and secure, then it's not going to come out. There we go. So I'll give it a good push, not too hard, of course. Rock it back and forth. Then this computer uses these clips. To secure the card so we'll make sure that clips down so we have our two clips on now it's fairly secure but because I had to take off that brace I'm going to go ahead and put a screw in here as well just to make sure we're not having any movement of the card because this is a larger heavier card oh, yeah. all right so that is very secure you can see I'm giving it a a pretty good shake and it's not moving at all all right now I need to rearrange some of the other things I have in here real quick all right so now everything is secure in the case I've rearranged my other cards in my computer so everything has plenty of space now we need to connect our six pin connector from the power supply into the six pin on the back here of the Quattro FX 4600. And that'll slide right in there. It shouldn't be too difficult. Just make sure you get it the correct direction, which will be this way with the clip coming out this side towards the fan here. Push it in until it clicks. Hey, you knucklehead! And we're good. Okay, so now all that's left is that we'll go over the internals of our computer and make sure everything is still properly seated and everything is hooked up, make sure we didn't accidentally, you know, pull out some connections of some sort. So we'll do that and then we'll power it on to see if the fan on the Quattro comes on. And then we'll uh, turn on our computer and see if it boots up. Now we have plugged in our power supply and powered it on, as you can probably tell from this light here. So power's getting to the motherboard. So all we need to do now is power on the computer and see if we get power to this card. We'll see if the fan comes on. So let's power on the computer. All right. The computer is coming on. All right. Yep. Fan is working and never stick your hands in a running computer. You should make sure all hands and tools are clear. The Quattro FX 4600 is indeed working. So now we can power down the CPU. I'll hook everything right back up and we'll see if we can boot up the Windows 8.1 and then see if we can launch Avid Media Composer. Okay, so we got everything all hooked up again. Our monitors, 11 rack, iLocks, external hard drives, speakers and whatnot. So let's power on the system and see if the monitors come on and if Windows 8.1 will boot up with the NVIDIA Quattro FX 4600. There it is, looks like Windows 8.1 Pro 64 bit is coming up. So after this boots up, I'll more than likely need to install some drivers since the only drivers on the system are the GeForce drivers, I'll need to install some qualified Quattro drivers now. Okay, so there we go. We can see our resolution is way off, but that's because the card is going to be using just a stock Microsoft driver. Okay, so it comes up and it works, obviously. Oh, well, look at this here. It looks like uh, Windows is automatically installing some device drivers for me. 
So I'll just wait a second and let these install and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Looks like it's installing some drivers. Now that looks better. But I'll still be sure to install the latest NVIDIA Quattro driver. Oh, and now my second monitor has come on. You can see there. So we can see here in Device Manager that indeed Quattro FX 4600 is being recognized. Okay, so if we look here in Device Manager now, we can see that NVIDIA Quattro FX 4600 is being recognized. If we check the driver, see that Microsoft actually installed the latest driver from NVIDIA. This is the driver I was going to install, but in fact, Windows 8.1 ended up installing it for me. First, it installed just a stock Microsoft driver, but then it asked me to restart the computer, and when I did, it automatically installed the latest NVIDIA driver, so that's pretty cool. One more thing I'll check, show hidden devices. So we're still showing our old GeForce 7950 GT. I'm going to go ahead and uninstall this driver just to make sure we're not having any conflicts with Media Composer or any other graphics programs. Okay, there we go, good. Now all that's left to try is, let's see if Media Composer 7.0.2 comes up all right. All right, and here we are in Media Composer. It came up just fine. It didn't recognize our video card as approved. I think I explained that earlier. But we see here, Media Composer comes up, it's working. I have some media offline, that's because I actually deleted these files because I didn't need them anymore. But it's coming up, it's working. So the next thing we'll need to do is pop into the Qualified GPU Board Notepad document for Media Composer. And we'll come in here and manually add our Quattro 4600. But that's for a different video. So that was the NVIDIA Quattro FX 4600. We unpacked it, installed it, Windows 8.1 installed the drivers for us. And we have Avid Media Composer working with it and it's working fine. Even though it's an older card, it's working fine in Windows 8.1.